Hi everyone, I'm Arbazi and welcome to Grey Go. So, Grey Go is a real-time strategy game developed by Petroglyph Games, company best known for the Star Wars Empire at War. And since I always enjoyed a good RTS game, and there weren't that many decent RTS games released in the past year or two, I decided to check it out. I'll be playing it a bit. I might do the full single-player campaign. We'll see how it goes. The main reason the game caught my attention is because it promises to focus less on micromanagement and more on large-scale decision-making, so I really like that direction. We'll see if it can deliver. Anyway, before we go any further, I got two quick disclaimers, but important ones. So, first of all, I'm not into competitive multiplayer in case of RTS games. So, adjust your expectations <laughs> based on that. I do, however, enjoy the genre a lot. Honestly, I enjoy all kinds of strategy games, so that does include RTS games. I played probably almost every single major RTS game released in the past 20-something years, starting with Dune 2 back in the day. I played almost every single major RTS since Dune 2, and I enjoyed most of them. But again, I'm a single-player kind of guy, so I do not play competitive multiplayer. If you expect 200 APM, multiplayer dot, then that's not what you're going to see in this series. So, you've been warned. And I don't really care about competitive multiplayer in RTS games either. I'm just a guy who enjoys strategy games. That's pretty much it. And the second disclaimer, a more important one, is a full disclosure that this is in fact a sponsored video, which is something I generally don't like doing. In fact, this is the first sponsored video I've ever done in the history of my channel. And the reason I accepted it is because this is a game I was already interested in. So that's that. Being interested in a game is always my number one criteria for everything I ever play here. So I would never accept anything I'm not actually interested in in the first place. So anyway, that's the disclosure out of the way. Before I actually start the campaign, let's talk very briefly about the basic story of the game, which is fairly straightforward. The game has three factions. First we got the Go, which is a life form originally engineered by the humans as a tool to explore the galaxy. Don't ask me how that's supposed to work, by the way, because I have no idea. But then the Go mutated beyond its original purpose, and now it just wants to consume everything on the way. Then we got the Beta, which is a once spacefaring race that fled to a planet called Ecosystem 9, a planet a human expedition happens to be investigating. So that's the gist of it. The planet is the place where the campaign takes place. Ecosystem 9. Okay, so let's actually get into the game. I will start the campaign. Now, I played a little bit already, mostly to know what's going on and how to actually play, so I'm not just fumbling around. But I played, like, the first mission, not even the entire first mission, so... Almost everything will be new to me. I will play the intro. Let's do that. Sinja, 
Pasuki Mirak, Tulibanas. Okay, so that's the intro. These are not the humans, as you might have guessed. We are playing as the beta in this case. Let's get into the first mission. I'm going to play on normal difficulty. And let's get started. Alert! I'm at Hunter's Valley with eight other survivors from the Proving Grounds. No major injuries. Alert. Saruk. I'm glad you're okay. Word of the attack has reached the keep. Some of the settlements of the lowlands can't be reached. Communications are a mess. Baz Barker is at Magsky and marshalling crews toward your position, but I have yet to get him on the comms. In the meantime, establish a headquarters in Hunter's Valley. Saruk, are we ready for this? Oh, I'm getting a signal from Barker. Stand by. I will go through the briefing before every mission. Because, you know, we are supposed to. <laughs> and I guess that's it. So the first mission is also kind of a tutorial, which introduces you to the basic concepts of the game. We will discuss that as we go. Sir, I'm sorry. I had to detonate the catalyst at the proving facility. If this is the silent ones, it was a necessary sacrifice. You made the right choice. I need your focus on the outer fields. We must ensure nothing else breaches the keyhole. Aran Saruk, I'm afraid the loss of the supply yards at the proving grounds has reduced our sky crane capacity in that area. You're going to have limited resources for a while. We'll make do. Let's get this base operational, then we can scout out what came through the keyhole. Alright, so here we are. These are our headquarters, our base. And the one thing I do like is that the keyboard shortcuts actually make a lot of sense and are based on Q, W, E, R, T and Y. So I actually like that quite a lot. They are always the same from left to right. So when I press Q, I go into structures and then the first building on the left is also Q. Like this. And this is the basic keyboard shortcut scheme that's used for the entire game. So I like that, it's quite intuitive. Anyway, I don't think I can actually pause real quick. So the basic resource in the game is just called resource. <laughs> and it is actually capped at 1000. You also get told what your resource rate is, which you are going to expend when you are building something. So when you start building something, the resources that are used for the building or the unit aren't all drained instantly. In this case, we are losing 54 resource per second. So they are not all drained instantly, you have to constantly expand them. And your resource is capped at 1000 at first. You can increase that cap as you play by building a silo. So anyway, this is our refinery. The basic resources are gathered from these areas. We can actually highlight them on the minimap like this. So we got some right here. We got some here. One refinery can use just one resource, one source of resources. And it does that through the extractor. It is possible to move the extractor because these resources will eventually run out. They will replenish slowly once they run out, but you obviously probably don't want to wait for that. So with the refinery out of the way, we are now getting 13 resource per turn or per second. <laughs> yeah. No, not per turn. Definitely not. Now we might want to get some units, which means we can build a factory. Now, as you might have noticed, we can only build buildings right next to our headquarters in these slots. That's kind of how base building works in the game and once we use all four slots we can actually get new ones but I'll get access to that in a few moments not yet I'll get access to that as I play but we'll be able to build small depots medium ones and large ones with more slots for buildings so that's kind of how base building works 
There's more to it than that, but these are the very basics. We need to find room to expand. That we do. Now that we have the factory, I can actually bind it to, let's say, five. So that's my control group with the factory. And I can queue up a bunch of units. And as you can see, the keyboard shortcuts, as I said earlier, are Q, W, E, R, T, and so on and so forth. So we can recruit two units, the commando, which will take 20 seconds and use four resources per second. So you get told what the total is and what the resource per second will be while you are recruiting this unit. So in this case, we will be spending four resources per second for 20 seconds. And in case of the stalker, we will be spending 5 resources per second for 30 seconds and we will use 2 population for the stalker since this is our population cap we can't go above that as you might have guessed alright and I can queue up a bunch of units here and I can queue them up quickly by using my keyboard shortcuts standard RTS stuff nothing earth shattering there and once we get a few dots, we'll explore a little bit. So, that's the Stalker, which is strong against armored targets, especially in groups. We can check their exact stats. So, they have damage. In this case, they have 11 damage, 3 penetration, and 0.25 rate of fire, and 375 range. They have 0 armor, 600 sight, and 120 speed. That's the Stalker. We can compare them to the Commando, which uses one instead of two population points, so these are obviously going to be weaker. They only got 4 damage and 0 penetration, 0.5 rate of fire, 350 range. So they have slightly lower range than the Stalker, it's not a huge difference, but it can always be important. They have no armor, 600 sight and 130 speed. So they are a tiny little bit faster than the Stalker. We got a few units. So, as I mentioned at the start, the game promises to focus more on large-scale decision-making and less on micromanagement. That's actually what attracted my attention in the first place. I'm not going to tell you whether it delivers or not, because I just started playing. But that's the basic idea that interested me the most. Plus the commando effective when attacking in groups can mount wall pillars or the hand of rook I'm not going to really talk about that because again I'm not too familiar with the game just yet I'm pretty much going to explore the game with you I only really played some of the first mission to know how the interface works to know all the basics to not just fumble around okay right well let's keep moving I'll keep some units queued up, because we should generally always have some units queued up, as long as we're not at zero resources and spending resources every second. So this is the brush, which is one of the important tactical elements of the game. Units inside the brush can see and target units outside of the brush. Units outside of the brush can't see into it, unless it's a specific unit type that can. Some of the unit types can do that. Most of them cannot. So that's something to consider for sure. We'll grab a few more. I'll just keep units queued up at all times, more or less. I'm still gaining resources while recruiting. You can also pause recruitment. So if you are building too many things at the same time, or recruiting too many units at the same time, you can go into some of your buildings and temporarily pause the queue instead of completely removing it just to regain some of your resources per turn. So, we got some more resources right here. You can see all the resources on the map with this toggle right here. Yep, as the guy said, we have to destroy the plug to be able to use this resource. So, how do we actually build an extractor here? We'll do that in just a moment. Let's grab a few units with us. I can set a rally point, standard RTS stuff there, just by right clicking, might as well do that. But it's probably a good idea to leave some basic units as defense back here, just in case something slips through. 
Yep, that's the blockaded resource field. Alright, so now. Now we need a small hub. Which is basically a building which allows to connect other buildings. It provides power for two connected structures. We can build it right here and then take advantage of these resources. I can rotate it around. Beginning construction. And there's the hub. Now we need to wait 30 seconds. And we are not recruiting anything. But there may be other aircraft around. We'll need to avoid them for now. There's some more brush around here. We probably don't want to go there just yet. I'll wait with that a bit. And I'll set the rally point here from the factory. I'll just leave one or two units behind. You know, just in case some enemy unit slips through. There's our hub, and now we can grab a refinery and connect it to the resource. I think I actually need vision there. So let's move real quick. I could have built this a tiny little bit closer. And right here. And we'll get 10 resources per second from that one, as you might have noticed. Okay. I can also grab a factory here. Just to get more units faster. So we'll do exactly that. I can also build a medium hub. Once I run out of space. I'll probably want more than just two factories. I will get more than enough resources to recruit units constantly. Especially if I recruit mostly commandos. That's four resources per second. This extractor is giving us 13 per second. And this one is 10 per second, so that's 23 total. Yeah, we can easily use more than two factories. Also, yeah, we are getting fired at from inside the brush. Which is not fantastic. Alright, so I'll bind the factory. So let's say six. And then we got two factories on five and on six. Let's focus on some commandos for now. These are cheaper. And we can recruit them slightly faster. To build up a bigger army faster. And I'll grab one more factory that will recruit some stalkers, I suppose. Which means we need another hub. I think a small hub will be enough here. I don't feel like I need a large one. So, like this. Alright. Let's check this area out. See if there's anything interesting. And there is. That's a wall. We'll have to destroy that, which might take a moment or two. Might as well get started on that. We got some units coming. I'll set that rally point a tiny little bit closer. This is actually the only way to reach my base, which means I don't really need a lot of defenses back here. It's not possible to move through here. This is a cliff. Nothing attacking me, just the wall right there. Alright, and we'll keep recruiting the commandos. Just keep queuing them up. And get one more factory. For stalker recruitment. There we go, that's going to be 7. And set the rally point. So we got a factory on 5, 6 and 7. Keep attacking that wall. And the units. We don't actually have to destroy all of these. We can move through now. The force field thing is gone, so we can actually move through. But might as well destroy it. As we're recruiting more units. Because I want a little bit more than this. And we'll get some stalkers here. We are still gaining resources. Every second. I could actually afford two more factories easily. But that would be overkill for this mission anyway. Three factories should be enough for our needs. We will unlock one more unit once we reach the next area here. I'm just going to ignore these walls. I think I can move now. We got 13 commandos and 3 stalkers. I'm pretty sure that's going to be enough. Okay. Keep queuing this. Yep, there's the outpost right here. With a large hub. 
and a tank attachment. So, as you might have guessed, the tank attachment will unlock some new units. Oh, and this is actually an artillery, which has a minimum range, which means I can walk up to it and get killed by another artillery. <laughs> All right. That happened, but it's okay. We are recruiting more. Let's go. Some units have an actual minimal range, which means you can just walk up to them and hit them in the face. They'll have to move away from you to be able to hit you. And that was one such unit. Artillery type one. Can we actually see that stat here? Well, not while we're being fired at. But we can just walk up like this, hit it, and yeah, get shot at by the other one. Which is not fantastic. You have more units. We need some reinforcements. We need to destroy that other artillery unit. But first we need to kill these two dudes in the front. Oh, also, we can use the wall. But it's a little bit too late now. You can actually position your units on the wall. Some of them at least. The commandos can do that. It's a little bit too late now, so I don't think I'll get a chance to show you, unfortunately. Yep, it's gone. I can repair the buildings. Because I do actually control them now. Alright, let's go get rid of that artillery. Preferably without getting killed again. Keep units queued up. There's the artillery. It's firing at the building at the moment. We will likely get hit once. Yeah, there are more units incoming. I think I'll have to wait in the back to get more. Or maybe I should actually build that extra factory, but when I'm recruiting everything, I'm down to one resource per second. Probably shouldn't be doing that then. We'll wait for some more. But actually, I'm going to make a pause here and continue in the next part. So, thanks for watching this first episode, and I'll see you again soon.